I remember looking out of the hospital window and seeing my college campus on the other side of the highway. I was supposed to be there on that campus, and instead I was confronting the most unexpected experience of my life, a limb-threatening, methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus infection. Methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, or MRSA, are a type of staph bacteria that are resistant to antibiotics typically used to treat staph infections. Healthy individuals can carry MRSA in their nose or on their skin without any harm. However, when this bacteria enters the body through injuries, such as cuts or scrapes, an infection may develop. While MRSA usually causes skin and soft tissue infections, it can also cause more serious lung, muscle, or bloodstream infections, if not recognized and treated in a timely manner. Midway through my gymnastics season, I experienced a quick onset of pain in my left hamstring. And over time, it became increasingly painful to the point where I couldn't touch it, I couldn't walk, I couldn't put any pressure on it. And at first, doctors just thought it was a muscle strain and um, knots in my hamstring. But then I started developing flu-like symptoms and my leg became very red and swollen. And it was clear that something else was very wrong. I was admitted to the hospital and diagnosed with a superficial soft tissue infection that would likely be treated with antibiotics. However, then an MRI showed that the infection was deeper and actually within my hamstring. Doctors decided to take me in for emergency surgery and that's when they discovered that I had a severe MRSA infection inside that muscle. I had eight surgeries over two weeks, spent one month in the hospital and the next three months recovering from home. Needless to say, my season and that entire semester of college was abruptly ended by something that I never saw coming. It is important for you to report skin infections to your athletic trainer or team physician when you notice signs of infection. These include skin sores or lesions that are red, swollen, painful, warm to the touch, full of pus or other drainage. Tenderness, redness, and swelling around a joint accompanied by a fever and chills may also indicate a MRSA infection. MRSA skin infections often resemble a pimple or a spider bite. However, when in doubt, check it out. The rapid diagnosis is crucial in treating MRSA and preventing its spread among team members. One of the most unnerving parts of my story is that neither I nor doctors could pinpoint when or where I got the infection. I didn't have this standard symptom presentation, and many diagnostic tests overlooked it. But while such a severe, deep MRSA infection is rare, acquiring MRSA from the athletic setting is not. MRSA can survive on surfaces for up to two weeks if they are not disinfected appropriately. Towels, athletic equipment, mats, benches, free weights, whirlpools, and locker handles have all been shown to be contaminated with the bacteria. A recent study showed that 13% of U.S. collegiate athletes are colonized with MRSA, which means that they carry the bacteria on their skin without showing signs of infection. But the risk for infection among these colonized athletes was 7.3 times higher than the risk for infection among athletes who don't carry the bacteria on their skin. In comparison, only 2% of the general population carries MRSA on their skin. So why are athletes at increased risk for acquiring MRSA and developing infections? MRSA spreads easily among athletes because they have repeated skin-to-skin -skin contact, get cuts and scrapes that, if left uncovered, allow MRSA to enter the body and cause infection, share surfaces and equipment that come into direct contact with the skin, and are sometimes unable to shower immediately after their athletic participation. But your risk for infection doesn't end when your practice does. MRSA transmission can also occur before and after athletic participation, in areas such as the locker room or athletic training room. This means that all athletes, not just contact sport athletes, are at high risk for infection. I was a collegiate gymnast and considered myself to be very attentive to hygiene. However, even people with good hygiene habits can acquire staph or MRSA infections because of the interactions we have with each other and with the environment. Ultimately, we're the ones who transfer the bacteria to each other and to the environment. Therefore, your skin health and hygiene affects my skin health and hygiene, and vice versa. And this is why it's so important to engage in those prevention measures that the CDC and NCAA recommend. By being aware of risk factors and practicing good hygiene, you can limit the risk of MRSA transmission and infection in your athletic facilities. You can play a role in MRSA prevention by engaging in the preventative actions recommended by the Centers for Disease Control and NCAA. Keeping your hands clean by washing them thoroughly with antibacterial soap and warm water. Showering immediately after practices or games. 
not using whirlpools with open wounds. Washing your clothes after each use, cleaning equipment after each use, maintaining clean locker room facilities, seeking proper first aid for all wounds, recognizing signs of infection, referring suspicious wounds to an athletic trainer, and covering all skin lesions appropriately. Preventing and controlling MRSA is a team effort, so following these guidelines is not just to keep yourself healthy, it's also to protect others. As teammates, you do everything you can to protect each other on the fields. Continue that off the field, in the locker room, athletic training room, and weight room, by taking care of your skin and protecting yourself against MRSA infection.